If you heard the terms space x-ray laser and Star Wars, you could easily think I was talking about the Death Star. However, I'm not. I'm talking about a real project that aimed to develop space-based lasers that would take out enemy missiles. Also, did I mention that it was powered by a nuclear bomb? I'm almost a doctor, and this is Project Excalibur. But where to start? I mean, your first question might be, why? Why build a device like this? Well, to understand that, we need a bit of context. This project was a product of the Cold War and was first proposed in 1975. At this point, missiles capable of delivering nuclear warheads to every corner of the globe were pointed at each other as the USSR and the USA feared war. One potential solution to this was the space-based X-ray laser, a device capable of taking out multiple incoming enemy missiles. The need for a nuclear blast to power such a device is complicated and a bit nuanced. To even understand why such an unconventional device was even considered, well, we need to look at a few things. Firstly, power. Shorter wavelengths in lasing requires more power to produce the same amount of photons. Take this formula. Whilst it's complicated, we only need to look at two things. These two. What we get from this is that an increase in frequency so a shortening of the wavelength, which we'd have to do to make an X-ray laser, increases the amount of power required cubically. So a 1.2 nanometer laser, which was a goal of the project, requires roughly 200 million times more power per photon than your typical red laser. Another problem arises from the laser cavity. If you want to learn more about lasers and how they operate, as well as how movies get them wrong, don't forget to check out my previous video. But simply put, the laser cavity is just a setup that allows us to bounce our beam back and forward so it gives us a chance to build its intensity. However, with x-rays, that's nearly impossible. So we have a shorter amount of time in which to build our beam. Combined with the extra power that we need, this is why a nuclear bomb was even considered as an energy source for such a laser. In 1975, George Chaplin and Lowell Wood of the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories first suggested the use of an X-ray flash to power such a laser. Although they didn't specifically mention nukes, they did suggest that conventional sources for flashes wouldn't be bright enough. And it was shortly after this that a nuclear bomb was first proposed, as they produced bright X-ray flashes upon detonation. In 1978, the first test was conducted on the idea, although equipment failure prevented any measurements from being taken. 1980 saw the first successful test of the concept during an underground detonation of a nuclear bomb. Wood and Chaplin now had the backing of Edward Teller, who was excited for a third generation of nuclear weapons. And he then pushed the idea to the new Reagan administration the following year. In 1983, President Reagan announced the Strategic Defense Initiative, or SDI, which later became known as the Star Wars program. Its goal was to develop technology that would render nuclear missiles obsolete. One aim of the project was to develop a bomb that upon detonation could target up to 50 incoming enemy missiles with X-ray lasers. I call upon the scientific community in our country, those who gave us nuclear weapons, to turn their great talents now to the cause of mankind and world peace, to give us the means of rendering these nuclear weapons impotent and obsolete. Two more tests were conducted in 1983, although one suffered from technical problems. And it's here that the problems begin. If this all seems a bit too far-fetched, then you're probably correct. Treaties by now banned the use of weapons in space, especially nukes, although this point was largely ignored and money kept being funneled into the project. Another problem was that it was noted how easy it'd be to take out such a device, launch a single missile at it, and you either have to detonate the bomb or let the missile strike the target. Either way, the device is destroyed, 
On top of this, a test in 1985 showed that the beam was not as bright as expected, and efforts to focus it had failed, meaning that it couldn't really be aimed properly. You know, just a slight problem if you're trying to hit incoming enemy missiles. Despite these shortcomings, tests continued until 1992, when the US shut down its nuclear test program altogether. And unfortunately, we may never know the full results of many of these experiments, due to the secrecy that surrounds them. On a lighter note, however, whilst bomb-driven X-ray lasers were never fully developed, work continued on other methods, and eventually free electron pumping was developed, which gave us the modern-day synchrotron, devices which are used all over the world for research, and enable us to look at everything from the structure of viruses and proteins to chemicals that we might find on other planets and bodies in our solar system like Pluto. Whilst the original goals of Project Excalibur were never met and it was ultimately a failure, I still think this is a happy end to the saga of X-ray lasers. Here, an artist's projection of the President's vision. Banning into space, a layered defense to protect the country from nuclear devastation. In conclusion, today we had a brief look at Project Excalibur the history and science behind it, and its ultimate failure. Hopefully you all found it interesting, and if you did, don't forget the usual like and subscribe below. If you have any suggestions for things you want to see in future videos, let me know in the comments. And remember, I'm almost a doctor, and until next time, be like a proton. Stay positive.